What? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another video. Welcome to Sia's Domain. Off the jump, let's jump straight into things. Now, Kyle Rittenhouse came out to say that he supports Black Lives Matter on an interview with uh, Tucker Carlson, because Tucker Carlson just couldn't wait to get an interview with this fella. You know, in my own personal opinion, I think maybe Kyle Rittenhouse should have waited for about a year, but no, Tucker Carlson couldn't just wait, like, right there, and then he wanted to have this interview. I think there was a time at the uh, during the court cases when the, um, um, the judge, I think he chased out Tucker Carlson's uh, crew because they, I don't know what they were doing, but I didn't really read into it. But they were so, so, so desperate to write, really get into this interview for the sake of Kyle Rittenhouse or maybe for the sake of money, which is what, you know, most of these people do whether you're on the left or on the right this is their job this is what they're supposed to do so i'm not going to really criticize Tucker carlson for doing what Tucker carlson does but this in my own personal opinion i gotta start straight off the jump is a bad move i know this is a pr move i'm going to tell you straight off the jump but it is an absolute bad move but before we get into anything i want to play a video i want to play this video that's been circulating twitter so that we can see exactly what he said i'm going to show you some twitter reactions and then i'm going to share my own personal opinion on on this now before we dive into the video please do not forget to smash that like button down below because it does help the video now without further ado let's check out Kyrie now doing what Kyrie now was asked to do this has nothing to do with race um it never had anything to do with race it had to do with the right to self-defense right um i'm not a racist person i support the blm movement i support peacefully demonstrating and I believe there needs to be change. I believe there's a lot of prosecutorial misconduct, not just in my case, but in other cases. And it's just amazing to see how how much a prosecutor can take advantage of all right, so you saw that you heard that for yourself. As you can see, everything was well tailored. The way he answered it, everything was like, you know, I don't know what question that Tucker Carlson asked him, but there was this need to, you know, mention that he supports Black Lives Matter and whatnot when, you know, clearly this is not going to change anything because I know the reason why they're trying to do this. They are trying to like, you know, get him back into the society because people like this are seriously stigmatized. But I think this is a terrible, terrible PR move off the jump i think the whole thing the whole thing has been against Kyle Rittenhouse. The whole thing, the whole court cases, everything has been against him. And these guys, the PR, the people behind him, I don't think they like him much. Because to start with, they had a really, really good lawyer on the case. There was a guy called Robert Burns. And Robert Burns was the person that took on Kyle Rittenhouse's case, was supposed to build the actual lawyers to defend him. But at the end of the day, he was sidelined. I don't know by which authority, by which people, but they sidelined Robert Burns, right? And then they brought this persecuted Mark Richards. Now, Mark Richards has boasted a lot about having done over 100 uh, defense cases, but I've read through his record and I actually confirmed exactly what Robert Burns said. There's no records of him winning those cases. So first of all, in my personal opinion, that's a setup. Because when you take a good look at the starting of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's defense, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was an absolute losing battle. It was a losing battle. And the only way I believe that Kyle Rittenhouse would have won this case if, if he was truly innocent by law. If he was truly innocent by law, that's the only way he would have won this case because those guys were atrocious at first. And the only way they won this was because the prosecution shot himself in the foot by trying to manipulate evidence and things like that, by trying to do all sorts of things that were not, you know, uh, uh, lawful in court. And um, he got caught doing them. You know, try to manipulate uh, weaknesses and whatnot. This was some of the reasons why this guy won, because it was really set up against him. The judge that is now being criticized by leftists is a leftist or at least a liberal. The judge is a Democrat. And a lot of people don't know this. If you're watching MSNBC, you will never hear them mention it because they were pissed that the judge was fair in court. They were pissed because he was fair and everything he put out in place, how he ruled over the case was fair was just, right? And they were not happy about that. They wanted him to allow the prosecution to do whatever they like. So that was a mistake on their part. But then he was really fair. And at the end of the day, Kyle Rittenhouse won. Also, you got to think about the fact that they didn't sequest the jury. So these are three reasons they didn't sequest the jury. So the jury was subjected to what? Public opinion. 
Why you want to tell me that the juries wouldn't go home and, and look at the internet and see what people are saying, or they wouldn't know that there could be a riot or something like that? No, they weren't sequestered. They let them go home. They let them do whatever they like. And in a high profile case like this, you're not supposed to let that happen because somebody could actually track them and dox them. We saw MSNBC try to track them down. We don't know what they were trying to do, but I'm guessing that they were trying to get the names of these people so that they can be the first to interview the jurors, you know, because that's gonna be a, a, a big expose, uh, you know, a big exclusive kind of a thing. So I think that's what they were going for, but some people are saying they were trying to dox them or something like that, but I don't believe that. I, I like to give people like MSNBC the benefit of the doubt, because if they try that, that's gonna ruin their, station anyway moving on also i think i heard something about um judge floyd's brother also trying to dox the uh, uh juries as well so they should have been sequestered and everything that was going on with this case was actually heading towards mistrial and whatnot but anyway that's all about the case that i wanted to say that this guy was set up from the jump now when it now comes to the pr aspect of it the pr aspect is absolutely atrocious atrocious because i tell you his lawyer this same mark richards this guy who has done over 100 defense cases but never boasts about winning one of which i've read the records as well robert burns said this a high profile lawyer the high profile lawyer that's handling alex jones's case is handled cases for people like wesley snipes and some other uh big profile cases he said he said I don't know any record of him. And that's a guy who actually went to university in Wisconsin and whatnot. But anyway, this is what the defense lawyer came to say. And this is a poor PR, in my opinion, because this is being used against them. Just take a listen to this. Um, we did a mock jury and the mock. So this was him, before we go into that, this was him talking about why they put Kyle into the stand and the process they went through. Listen. Jury where the, the 12 people did not hear Kyle's story. He scored much worse than the people who did hear his story. And that was subject to cross-examination by a uh, trained expert. All right. So you saw that you heard that pretty practically what he's saying is that they actually created a jury. Right. And so they told the story to the jury and the jury scored the story, a mock jury, right? A mock jury, not the actual one. And then they brought Kyle to the stand and then they told the story. I mean, Kyle told his story to them. So what is this trying to tell us? That he was trained. So apparently when people are saying that Kyle's tears on the stand, we are not real. <laughs> This is it. This is telling people that Kyle's tears were not real. He shouldn't be coming out to tell us the process. We don't need to know. You won, you won. But this is him trying to glow, trying to feel good about himself, that this is what we went through. This is bad PR. Absolutely bad, bad, bad PR, as a lot of people have jumped on this. And one of the people that jumped on this is this professor, this lady, uh, uh, Kim Will, or whatever her name is. She was on the heels rising and she was talking about this. And I think she came to argue in favor of Kyle Rittenhouse. But at the end of the day, she was arguing with another, uh, she was supposed to be somebody who would come and maybe talk about this or maybe argue for i don't know but at the end of the day she came up arguing against carl rittenhouse and this is what she had to say and mr rittenhouse sobbed on the stand he also had two million dollars of defense money behind him um that most of the vast majority the millions of of americans who are, are arrested and go through the criminal justice system disproportionately people of color don't have the money to have two mock jury trials in which you try out testifying and you try out not testifying and decide which went better. In this instance, Mr. Rettenhouse's testimony went better with the fake juries. And so they put that in front of the real juries. I mean, access to money is a tremendous advantage in our legal system, unfortunately, both criminally. So you can see absolute poor, poor, poor. So it's like they set him up to lose. He eventually won. And now they're setting him up to lose outside of the courts right? Because he's not winning with public opinion. What has this done? What has this, this little clip that Tucker Carlson put out there or they let leak? What has it done? Let's see. Let's see the reactions. Let's see the reactions. If people on the left are finally like, oh, we're going to accept Kyle into our hands. Let's see what they are saying about this whole thing. Oh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, see, laughing. 
<laughs> Carrick now says supports BLM. Laughing, you know, uh, 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 what do you call them? GIF or whatever. Laughing GIFs, right? Laughing meme. Laughing meme. Oh, uh, look, look at this person. Short TV says, written now says he supports BLM and he's not a racist in an interview with Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson, of all people, that leftists already believe that he is a white supremacist. Why would you do an interview with Tucker Carlson, whom leftists already believe? is a white supremacist. He's not a white supremacist. I don't believe he's a white supremacist. I don't think he is a white supremacist, right? But leftists believe this. And these are the people you're trying to win over. And then you go ahead and bend a knee. You never bend a knee to these people because they will never take you. They would use that opportunity to destroy you. Look at them. Look, they're, they're, they're saying he's throwing that white supremacist sign. The same sign I told you that, what? AOC threw the same sign, you know, in a in a, in an ad or something like that. AOC did the same sign. So does that make AOC a white supremacist? But that's what they're saying. Short TV, Carl Rittenhouse, says he support BLM and he's not a racist in an interview with Tucker Carlson. Look at the sign. Um, what else? Uh, Free the World says uh, BLM DC is Carl Rittenhouse after he says he supports the movement. You know, and, you know, no one's going to take you. Why would you go out there and do an interview now? Now? You don't need it. Like it's 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 ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I don't even know what to say about this. Look at that. Like they're starting to show everything, everything, right? So how is this PR? How do, how does it make any sense to these people? How does it make any sense to these people? And they're paying million. I don't know how much they're paying their PR, but they must be paying them in hundreds of thousands of dollars to think of a better way to bring this ba guy back into society, but they are doing him more harm than good. They are absolutely doing him more harm than good. I am yet to see anything here. And then some people are sharing these uh, certain tweets by some certain right-wingers saying, right-wingers are now backing away from Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, let me find that tweet. Yeah, some people are resharing these tweets. There are about four of them. So this one says... Um, uh, by Christoph Walker says, spent three weeks praying for this dude to be acquitted just for him to say this, you know, um, who's the next one? Uh, the next one was, um, uh, Robert E. Ree or something like that. These people are all pseudo names and pseudo icons and whatnot. And they are not in, in, in any shape or form. They are not being, uh, they're not blue check marks. They are not verified accounts. So I don't know what accounts these really are, but these are the accounts that they've been sharing over and over on Twitter. The, the ones I saw a couple of hours ago before I got home. And so it says, um, I knew he was going to chuck, but I didn't expect it to be this quick and this blatant. You support the people who try to kill you inshallah they shall succeed next time you know so people are sharing the same 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 uh tweets over and over uh for people from the right or supposedly from the right that cowboy says i changed my mind kyle is not white i repeat not white cold brown cold brown cold brown he's not one of us and the reason why you know, the PR would have thought this would be a good PR for him is because Kyle Rittenhouse is actually mixed. And a lot of people don't know that Kyle Rittenhouse is half Hispanic. He comes from a very mixed family, right? And so he's kind of brown, right? And so uh, they believe that if he comes out to say he supports Black Lives Matter and you look at the roots, maybe if we watch the full Car um, uh, Tucker Carlson interview, we might hear them talking about this and saying that Kyle Rittenhouse is not white. So because he's not white, he's not a white supremacist because white supremacists, they have the one drop rule. The one drop blood rule means that if you have a drop of blood that is not white in you, you cannot be a white person, which is still being used till today. The one drop rule is what you know separates people that are like obama from white people you know so if you're half white half black or people like kamala harris if you're half white half black you can't be a white supremacist so this is what they are trying to push and i get that but it's a dumb 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 move but anyway let me know what you think in the comment section below if you think that no this is a great pr stunt for a uh, car house or do you think um oh, no his prs they are absolute idiots and they shouldn't have done this at all with tucker carlson not now maybe probably a year or two years in the future probably when things have settled down they might have done an interview like this but anyway, what do I know? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe. Ding that bell for notification. And I'll be catching you guys again real, real soon. Take care of yourself. Have a great week ahead. Peace. And Sayas out of here. Bye-bye.